Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do some fun stamping techniques using embossing powders, fabric, ribbon, and adhesive. And the adhesive I'm using is from our sponsor, Craft Chameleon, formerly Punch Place Plus, and I have a link in the video description so you can go check out the adhesive sheets that I'm using. So what I'm doing is just tracing my main panel for my card onto a sheet of adhesive and trimming it out. Now I'm removing the backing from my adhesive sheet and carefully placing it on that cardstock that we just traced. Make sure the sheet is pressed down firmly and then remove the other adhesive backing. So you're gonna have a piece of cardstock with a really sticky sheet on top. Now we're going to be placing a stencil down so that we can do some selective embossing. But before you put your stencil onto your cardstock, you want to give it a good coating with embossing ink, glycerin, or you can use some coconut soap mixed with a little water. Basically, you wanna make sure that that is not gonna stick permanently to your adhesive sheet. That would be a bummer. The stencil I'm using is by Dreamweaver. I've selected a rust tapestry embossing powder and tapestry just means it's got a bunch of flecks of different colors in there and I'm carefully sprinkling it all over my panel. Don't worry about using too much because all of the excess for this first layer can be put back in the jar when you're done. You wanna make sure you cover every bit of your stencil though. Now gently lift off the stencil. You'll see that um, the powder pretty much only went where the openings in the stencil were. There was an area there where I didn't press my stencil down very well and some powder did get underneath, but don't worry because I have plans for that mistake area. A mistake is an opportunity for embellishment whenever you're card making, keep that in mind. Now I'm sprinkling over some bright gold embossing powder. Now since um, this is going on a layer of embossing powder that has not been fixed or heated, you're not gonna wanna put that gold powder back in the same container, but that's all right, keep it aside. We're gonna use it on this project in a few minutes. Now use your heat gun to heat your panel. Now I found that a panel this size with this heat tool took me about two and a half to three minutes to heat up. I've sped it up so that you could kind of see how it looks and how the colors really show up differently once the heat is applied. Now, if you don't wanna deal with embossing powder or you don't have any, this technique would work so pretty with glitter and you can skip the heating step. Here you can see that the gold turned out really bright and shiny and was a nice contrast against the rust tapestry embossing powder. Now don't worry about any of the bits that look a little uneven or ununiform because this is just a base panel. We're gonna be doing so many layers and different techniques that there's no reason to worry. Now I'm just trimming around the gold border on the panel for a nice neat look. I just got this vintage label stamp set and I thought it'd be really pretty with this card. So what I'm gonna do is share another technique for embossing powder with you. So the first thing I wanna do is ink up my stamp and that embossing ink is gonna act as a uh, protection layer on my stamp. And I'm also gonna add some of that embossing ink directly to the bottom of my embossed panel. Now, remember how I told you to save that gold embossing powder and not to put it back in the container? Well, here's where we're gonna use it. We're gonna dump some right there on the bottom of that panel and shake off the excess. Then you simply want to heat the panel just like you normally would. Now while the embossing powder is still hot, sprinkle in the rest of that leftover powder you have and heat it again. This is gonna make a slick of molten embossing powder that we can stamp directly into to get a deep impression of our vintage label. Now, if you wanted more contrast on your stamping, you could have inked up your stamp with any dark pigment ink, but I think it looks great just with the impression as is. Now we're gonna use a leftover piece of adhesive. You might remember that from our frugal foiling video last month. And um, we're gonna make a fabric flower. Now this adhesive is great. Never throw away even the smallest scraps because you can still use them to adhere down panels of paper or photos or whatever. It's good adhesive, even if it isn't a wonky shape. So here I just cut it off like a little square piece of adhesive, probably about two inches by two inches. And I'm taking some wired burlap ribbon and I'm kind of just um, loosely finger molding it into a rose just kind of rolling it up, you know, like you do, and kind of twisting, twirling, and spiraling it as I go. Now, burlap is a coarse fabric, and if you've ever tried to adhere it, you know it can be very difficult to make it marry into the glue so it holds well. Well, that's what I love about these adhesive sheets is that they're super sticky, and they'll grab even the coarsest of materials really well. In fact, Using this adhesive with fabric is one of my favorite techniques. So I'm kind of cutting this at an angle because I'm just gonna fold it kind of under itself and just get that tail kind of tucked into one of the um, spirals. And then I'm just gonna press it down firmly into my adhesive to secure it. Now I'm gonna leave that attached to the backing paper until I'm ready to add it to my card. 
For the focal point of my card, I am using this cute paper doll looking stamp. It actually reminds me of the vintage pattern ladies on, you know, old sewing patterns. Uh, the stamp's from Stampendous and the name of it is Fashion Dame, I believe. And I'm using Memento ink because I know I want to use my alcohol markers to color her in. I also want to do some paper piecing, so I'm stamping her jacket on this funky pattern floral that's from Die Cuts with a View from the Hippie Chic stack. In fact, all the papers I'm using are from that stack. Oh, and quick tip, when you're making a card, always choose your pattern papers first because then you, it's easier to match your ink and your coloring to pattern papers instead of the other way around. Before I begin any alcohol coloring, I first swatch out the colors on a scrap bit of paper that I'm using, the same type of cardstock rather. So over here in the margin, since I know I'm cutting her out, I'm trying a few different colors and markers to make sure they're going to look nice together. The colors I settled on for Spectrum Noir colors were CR2, TN3, FS1, FS8, and then I used two colors in the Premier range, the Caramel and the Peach. So I'm going in first with my darkest color, which is TN3, and adding shadows under the cheekbones, on the neck, and I also made sure I did the legs and arms while I was at it. Then I colored over my darkest colors with the peach from the Premier line. That's that new marker line that AC Moore's carrying, and I just kind of dragged the color around a little bit like that. Now I'm using a little Coral Red 2 on the cheeks and the lips, and then I'm going to blend it all together with Flesh Shade 1, and that's my lightest color, and that will just kind of smooth everything around and uh, make my highlights. Just make sure you do all the skin areas that are going to be showing after you put the jacket and skirt on this fashion dame. Then I fussy cut out the fashion dame and her skirt, and I went to cut out the jacket, but I wasn't happy with the contrast, so I decided to restamp the coat in a black pigment ink and then emboss it with black pigment powder, and now you can see how much better the lines stand out and how much sharper it looks. Cut the jacket out and set it aside. Now for the skirt, I want it to be made of real fabric. So what I'm doing first is taking a little piece of the adhesive tape that's sold on the roll from Punch Place Plus or Craft Chameleon, and I'm folding up the edge there. Look, I'm just hemming it. Isn't that great? Now the wonderful thing about this tape is you can actually use it to make clothes for your Barbies or your American Girl dolls. They even have like accessories and patterns and stuff on their website. So make sure you go check that out. Now I'm aligning the bottom hem with the bottom of my skirt. And I'm putting a couple more pieces of adhesive on the back of the stamped skirt. Now this is really easy. All you have to do is pull the fabric taut around the skirt and press it into the uh, adhesive. It's super simple and it's a great way to dress our little paper doll. Oh my gosh, I think this is so cute with the skirt and the jacket. Think of all the different scraps of paper and fabric that you could use to dress your paper doll. Now let's assemble the card. I really thought this pattern was fun, but it was a little too bold to show too much of it, so I just kind of put it down as a matting layer that'll kind of peek out underneath our embossed panel. Now, the thing I like about this adhesive is that it's not very expensive and it's very multi-purpose. It's super strong for like ribbon and embossing powder and glitter and fabric, but it's also cheap enough that it's fine to use with paper and you certainly know that your card's not gonna fall apart when it's in the mail. I'm adding adhesive to all four sides on this panel because it is that thick embossed panel and I want to make sure it's really secure, but you wouldn't need that much adhesive on a normal sheet of paper. Now that the embossed panel is firmly in place, we can start adding our focal images and I'm simply using that same roll of double-sided adhesive to dress my doll. I like that I can tear it into different lengths and pieces and just kind of get a little bit of adhesive here and there to make sure it's stuck down really well. And I love how it sticks well to embossed surfaces, slick surfaces, rough surfaces. It's really a wonderful tape and I urge you to check out the different sizes they offer. The 50 yard rolls range from about 275 to about 350 I think so very economical and the fact that you can use it on all surfaces really makes it great. Before I stick anything permanently down to my card, I like to move things around. So what I'm doing here with the flower is any leftover adhesive, I'm just folding back on itself. And if I set it gently down and don't press, I can keep moving it around until I'm ready. So what I've determined here is that I don't have enough contrast and I need to pull in some pattern papers to really make the card pop. 
I like to work with the four by six mat stacks. They're actually like four and a half by um, six and a half or something. They're meant for matting your photos for scrapbookers, but I find they're perfect for card makers because the pattern scale is a little bit smaller, better suited to cards. And then I don't have to cut into a big 12 by 12 sheet of paper when I just need a little bit for a card. So I actually use it. It doesn't just sit on my shelf. So what I'm doing here is kind of making a border with some torn papers. I want to have that vintage look, but I also want that pop of color. And again, I'm using my trusty tape from Craft Chameleon to glue it all in place. I felt like I needed some sort of element under the rosette. So I took some grow green ribbon and added some of the um, adhesive tape onto it so that I could form it into a V underneath the rosette. And that will help burden the eye through the different elements of the card. And also I find when I can overlap certain elements with others like ribbon or twine or whatever, it seems to bring the eye through and cluster everything and make everything feel connected rather than just floating around on the card. Now I think the card design looks so much more cohesive, but it's still missing something, so it's time to dig into the button box and see what I can find. I chose some buttons in colors already represented in my card, and I'm adding twine to a few of them. Then I'm simply gluing them down to my card with Beacon 3-in-1 or whatever thick adhesive you like. Quick tip, I use a stamping block to weight down my buttons while they dry so they don't pop up off my card and they bond really well. Now that I've finished the front of my card and I'm really happy with it, I thought I would take the leftover scraps and decorate the inside of my card. I used the backs of some of the pattern papers so I'll have a nice light area to write on. This is a super great tip for when you're working on a colored card base that wouldn't really show up very well with your ink or markers. And I'm just pretty much tearing bits and scraps until I have a nice design. Then for a little extra embellishment, I'm using the leftover twine that I had for my buttons, wrapping it around the um, panel that I'm gonna write on and just gluing it in place. I think it looks fantastic. Then just stick everything down and you are all set. I hope you enjoyed today's card project. I had a blast making it and I urge you to check out our sponsor, Craft Chameleon, formerly Punch Place Plus. They have these wonderful adhesive rolls and sheets. You will not be disappointed. And if you like to do a lot of crafting with your American Girl style dolls, the 18 inch dolls, they have a lot of accessories for that, as well as other wonderful gift items that you can make, acrylic shapes, you name it, they've got it. And they've got the best prices online. So check them out. The Link is in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.